Here is the inside of this inverter. The first thing I thought when I opened this thing up was, what did I just waste my money on? Um, I am uh, thoroughly unimpressed with this. I guess first the good things, um, I like the way the airflow works in this. They have these two fans over here which supposedly are temperature controlled. And uh, there's actually some, you can't see it here on the camera very well, but there's some space underneath here between the, uh, the top of the inverter and the bottom of this heat sink. Um, so air can flow underneath all the way out to the other side over here. And it can also flow along the side, and this is nicely ribbed. They have all of the, uh, the power FETs on both sides. Here's the high, um, high voltage power FETs over here, and uh, a few pairs of low voltage FETs kind of hidden back there that you can hardly see. Uh, but uh, that looks like it's all designed pretty well. Um, but uh, that's really about all I can say that's good about this thing. Um, I'll, uh, I guess, go over why, why I don't like it. First, it's obvious that this whole thing is hand soldered. It looks like the, uh, um, the bottom of it might be wave soldered. I don't know. I'm not going to take the rest of it apart to find out what the bottom looks like. I'm kind of scared to even look at what the bottom is at the moment. But uh, hand soldered, you can see all of the point, point to point wiring on here. Um, looks pretty, pretty nasty, really. Over here, we got a, a wire that's just kind of hand soldered onto that diode over there. All kinds of stuff that'll probably just rattle off as soon as you uh, give it the least little bit of vibration. But uh, so that's one thing I don't like. Um, there's other things too. There's there's not enough capacitance in here. In terms of bulk input capacitance, we have a set of four here, a set of four here, four here, four here. I think they're 2200 mic each. Uh, but in any case, there's 16 volt capacitors, which is not adequate for a 12 volt system. And uh, there's not enough of them. So you're relying on the uh, the battery to give you all of that ripple current. That means all the ripple current has to go through the input cable. Uh, your battery gets stressed because the plates your, of your battery see uh, physical stress. When there's ripple current, they vibrate. You can probably hear your battery hum when this is running. I'll, uh, I'll be checking that. But uh, So that's not good. It uh, looks like all of the input, input current has to go through these cables. Four of these cables, which look to be about 10 gauge. That is not adequate for a 2500 watt inverter. Not only are you losing a lot of power, you're potentially overheating things. Um, looks like the, uh, the buses that they have into the inverter are pretty good. They have the, this steel bus bar. Steel isn't the best material for conduction. It's actually fairly high resistance, but it is a lot cheaper than copper, so given that this is consumer grade, I'm going to excuse them for that. Uh, the heat sinks and such are all aluminum, which is the proper material to use. That's good. Uh, the uh, Oh, back to the capacitors. These are the output caps, the high voltage output caps. These are, I think, 200 volt caps. Um, yeah, 200 volt capacitors. There's only four of them for 22 amps, that uh, output current that it's rated for. That might be adequate, but 200 volts is not. I'm not happy about that either. Also, it's worth mentioning that these are Jamicon capacitors. It says right on the case, Jamicon. And uh, that is not a quality capacitor. That is a... Uh, Probably one of the higher quality Chinese capacitor brands, but uh, I would rate them in the in the lower 25% in terms of quality. You might get five years out of these before they degrade and fail. I would much prefer to see a, a quality American or Japanese capacitor in here, but again, I'm not terribly surprised. It is an inexpensive consumer grade inverter. Another thing I don't like are the uh, electrolytic capacitors over here. <clears throat> all of these caps over here, these little ones dotted all over the place. Those are for uh, control circuitry. A lot of those are low voltage, probably 5 or 12 volt uh, caps for control circuitry and such. Uh, probably timing the buzzer and all kinds of junk like that. But uh, those really should be something other than electrolytic. Those will fail eventually, and you'll never know which one it is. You won't be able to fix it. It's just a matter of time because, again, they're inexpensive Chinese capacitors which in my mind really isn't excusable for a lot of this stuff because it only cost a few cents more to get good ones. But uh, that's what they chose to use. Um, a lot of the hand soldering on these wires is very poor. Um, it looked like instead of stripping the wires, they just burned the insulation off and uh, called that good enough when, it when the wire stuck to whatever they're trying to solder it to. <clears throat> for example, take a look at uh, this board over here. Um, if I can get the light right. Uh, to kind of peer down in there. You can see the solder blobs from the hand soldering. It was not done with care and not well inspected. 
and uh, take a look at that potentiometer right there. Usually when you do have a potentiometer that you adjust from the factory, you uh, have to do something to secure it in place so that it doesn't turn again um, in shipment or in, in other uh, harsh environments with a lot of vibration. In this case they just took a soldering iron and melted the corner of it to keep it from turning. The proper way to do that is to put some caulk or adhesive on it. They obviously thought that was too expensive so they just melted it with a soldering iron and uh, obviously damaged it in the process because it looks like it's already rusting a little bit. It is fused, which is good, it probably has to be uh, in order to not be a fire hazard, but there are uh, four 40 amp fuses over here and four 40 amp fuses over here. That's 320 amps. 320 amps, once you consider the efficiency of this inverter, is going to be about enough for 2500 watts, which means that their uh, surge rating is already, I can tell you, not true. Um, that's, again, typical of these inexpensive consumer-grade inverters. If you get the better, better name brands that actually do have a surge capability for a few seconds, this one will not, because these fuses are going to blow. Uh, it looks like these are automotive blade style fuses. Um, I think they're replaceable. They don't look, yep, they have fuse holders on them, so I'll give them kudos for that. You can replace these fuses, so that's good but uh, it will limit the output capability to uh, 2500 watts and that's all you're going to get. So the surge capability is 2500 watts about on this. I can already tell you that. But uh, one last thing is it's extremely dirty. I don't know if you can see it on camera very well but uh, this thing is pretty filthy. Um, and it looks like it's not environmental dust, it looks like it's residual flux for manufacturing and other crud like that. Uh, which uh, probably isn't going to affect the function very much, but uh, it does mean that the board is going to corrode quite quickly because it's contaminated already. So I, th I think what I might actually do on this is take some uh, electronics cleaner and hose this whole thing down at some point to clean all that crud off. That should, uh, should keep it from accumulating dust and uh, potentially getting uh, solder bridging and uh, other corrosion sort of failure modes. But uh, there's the inside of it. I can't say I'm happy with it, but uh, we'll move on.